It was February 2017, a pivotal moment for global consumer goods giant Unilever. The American company Kraft Heinz had tabled a whopping $143 billion offer to acquire Unilever, raising eyebrows across the business world. Crafted in 2015 through a merger backed by investment heavyweights 3G Capital and Berkshire Hathaway, Kraft Heinz boasted sales of $26.5 billion in 2016, while Unilever's turnover stood at a substantial 52.7 billion euros. Unilever, however, stood firm, rejecting the acquisition bid, citing a lack of strategic or financial merit. CEO Paul Polman rallied Unilever shareholders to fend off the bid successfully. Despite the victory, the unexpected takeover attempt prompted Unilever to reassess its strategies. In response, Unilever announced plans to divest its spreads business, restructure key divisions, review its dual ownership structure, initiate a 5 billion euro share buyback program, and increase dividends by 12%, all aimed at accelerating cost savings and appeasing investors. Paul Polman expressed the need to expedite their plans, acknowledging the opportunistic nature of Kraft Heinz's approach. He emphasized Unilever's determination to use this episode as an opportunity to strengthen the company further. Meanwhile, in the Indian scenario, Hindustan Unilever Limited HUL, Unilever's Indian subsidiary, faced a similar challenge. Harish Manwani, the non-executive chairman, and Sanjeev Mehta, the CEO and MD, found themselves at the helm of HUL during this transformative period. Echoing Unilever's strategy, HUL outlined plans to divest non-core businesses, initiate a share buyback program, and increase its operating margin to 18%. In addition to aligning HUL's roadmap with Unilever's strategic review, Manwani and Meta grappled with competition from global giants like Procter & Gamble and Reckitt Benckiser, as well as local players like Nirma, Patanjali, and Amul. Despite HUL's impressive growth from 123 billion rupees and 19 billion rupees in net revenue and profits in 2006 to about 320 billion rupees and 41 billion rupees, respectively. In 2016, the Kraft Heinz takeover proposal emphasized the ongoing need to innovate and create value. Join us on a journey through the dynamic landscape of Hindustan Unilever Limited as we delve into how HUL navigated challenges and emerged stronger in the diverse markets of India. Unilever's Journey In 2005, Unilever faced challenges such as falling turnover, declining operating margins, and a decrease in employee morale. To tackle these issues, Patrick Seskow initiated the One Unilever Plan. This plan involved bringing together various business units in a country under a single operating company. The goal was to simplify decision-making, reduce duplication, and make the company more responsive to consumer and customer needs. As part of the One Unilever plan, regional supply chains were streamlined, and multi-country organizations were created, clustering countries with centralized management and shared functions. In 2008, a revamped R&D structure focused on fewer but more impactful innovations with swift global rollout. Building on these changes, Seskow further simplified Unilever's structure, combining the home and personal care and foods divisions under the leadership of Vindi Banga. Harish Manwani took charge of the combined Central and Eastern Europe regions with the Asia-Africa region. Unilever's board saw notable changes, with Michael Trezchow becoming the first non-executive chairman and three new directors, including Narayana Murthy, Hiksonia Nayasulu, and Genevieve Berger, joining, strengthening the core. In 2009, Paul Polman took the helm as Unilever's first outsider CEO, succeeding Seskow. Polman, known for his successful stints at Nestle and Procter & Gamble, brought a fresh perspective to Unilever. Under his leadership, Unilever continued its transformation journey. Pullman emphasized sustainability as a crucial aspect of business, focused on long-term management, and implemented changes in the organization's structure and governance. During Pullman's tenure, Vindi Banga bid farewell to Unilever after 33 years, and Harish Manwani was appointed as Chief Operating Officer in 2011. Pullman's management philosophy centered on sustainability, a long-term orientation, and organizational changes to make Unilever stronger and more confident. The positive changes implemented over the years positioned Unilever to weather economic storms, as Pullman noted at the annual general meeting.
Stay tuned as we delve deeper into Unilever's journey, exploring how these strategic shifts have impacted the company's trajectory. Unilever Sustainable Living Plan in 2010, Paul Pullman, Unilever's CEO, introduced the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan USLP, a visionary strategy to embed sustainability into the company's DNA. The plan aimed to enhance the well-being of people, minimize the environmental impact of products, ensure 100% sustainable sourcing of agricultural materials, and uplift the livelihoods of those connected with the supply chain. Pullman, emphasizing the need for a new business model, spoke against the conventional belief in trade-offs. He envisioned decoupling growth from environmental impact, aiming to double Unilever's size while reducing its overall effect on the environment. The Compass strategy, initiated in 2009, played a pivotal role in achieving these goals, focusing on technology-driven innovation, customer service excellence, streamlined supply chains, and a performance-oriented culture. By 2016, Unilever boasted a portfolio of 12 sustainable living brands, including Knorr, Lifebuoy, Dove, and Lipton. These brands, growing 40% faster than others, contributed significantly to Unilever's overall growth. Unilever's commitment extended to reaching 538 million people through programs promoting handwashing, safe drinking water, and oral hygiene. Impressively, 35% of Unilever's portfolio met the highest global nutritional standards, and the company achieved sustainable sourcing of 51% of agricultural raw materials. Unilever's strides in sustainability did not go unnoticed. The company was recognized as a leader in the household and personal products industry group in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, DJSI, a global benchmark for sustainability performance. Long-term orientation. Paul Pullman's management philosophy prioritized the long-term, challenging the short-term mindset prevalent in the business world. In 2009, he announced that Unilever would no longer provide quarterly guidance to investors, deeming it unviable under volatile economic conditions. Pullman stated that his focus was not on short-term gains for shareholders but on consumers and customers in a responsible way. He believed that by doing the right thing for the long term, business results would naturally follow. His emphasis on a four- or five-year process aimed at changing strategy, structure, and culture aligned with Unilever's goal of sustainable growth. A key aspect of Unilever's long-term orientation was a focus on emerging and developing markets. In 2011, Pullman revealed plans for 27 factories in these markets, recognizing the vast untapped consumer base. Acquisitions, such as Sara Lee's personal care business and Alberto Culver, strategically positioned Unilever in diverse markets and product segments. Unilever's journey continued with a commitment to sustainable nutrition, smart acquisitions, and cost-effective growth initiatives. The Connected 4 Growth C4G, program launched in 2016 aimed to simplify the organizational structure, scrutinize expenditures, and drive volumes through strategic pricing and channels, ultimately delivering €1 billion Euros worth of savings by 2018. Organization Structure and Governance As Paul Pullman implemented transformative changes at Unilever, a significant pillar of his strategy involved reshaping the organization's structure and governance. On his first day as CEO, he took bold steps, like freezing staff salaries and curtailing overseas travel for managers. Pullman introduced attractive bonuses for high performers and penalties for underperformers, aligning actions with outcomes. To foster quick decision-making and address challenges swiftly, Pullman launched a 30-day action plan, a departure from the traditional internal analysis and debate processes. The remuneration structure for executive directors underwent incremental changes, emphasizing performance-based components. Pullman's strategic personnel shifts across functions aimed to keep Unilever agile and competitive in a rapidly evolving market. The board of directors also underwent diversification, with members from China, Zimbabwe, and Italy joining the previously Dutch, British, and American-dominated board. To align pay with performance, the board proposed assessing compensation for executive directors based on financial results, share price performance, and non-financial measures contributing to long-term objectives. Hindustan Unilever Limited, Sinking Ship In 2006, Douglas Bailey, a Zimbabwe-born Englishman with extensive experience at Unilever, took the reins as CEO and MD of Hindustan Lever Limited, HLL. 
His appointment marked a significant shift, as he became the first non-Indian to lead HLL. Bailey, having worked in marketing roles at Coca-Cola and Gillette before joining Unilever, brought a wealth of global experience to his new role. Under Bailey's leadership, HLL underwent a structural overhaul to achieve a balance between focus and scale. Business directors were tasked with financial performance, while functional directors concentrated on excellence and capability building. This approach aims to enhance competitiveness and sustain profitable growth. New Identity Aligned with Unilever's global strategy of One Unilever, HLL officially transformed into Hindustan Unilever Limited, HUL, in 2007. The company bid farewell to the Leaf mnemonic, adopting the Unilever logo as its corporate identity. Doug Bailey emphasized that the new name and logo leveraged the positioning, scale, and synergy that being part of Unilever provided. HUL, under Bailey's guidance, went through various changes, including disbanding the new ventures division and integrating projects like Purit, Project Shakti, and others into relevant business divisions. The foods division merged with the home and personal care division, mirroring Unilever's global structure. Bailey's stint at HUL concluded in 2008 as he moved on to become the president of the Western Europe region and joined the Unilever executive team. Reflecting on his time at HUL, Bailey expressed his focus on getting the business on track and growing the bottom line, setting the stage for the next phase of the company's journey. Passing the baton. As the chapters turned in Hindustan Unilever Limited's HUL, journey, a pivotal moment arrived when Nitin Paranjpay stepped into the shoes of CEO and MD, succeeding Douglas Bailey. At 44, Paranjpay made history as the youngest individual to hold this esteemed position in HUL's chronicles. Harish Manwani, chairman of HUL, spoke highly of the smooth transition, crediting Bailey for fostering a robust pool of talent. Manwani expressed confidence in Paranjpay's capabilities, emphasizing the legacy of consistent and competitive growth left by Bailey. Paranjpay, a Mumbai's Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies graduate, had been an integral part of HUL since 1987, rising through the ranks with roles in marketing and sales. Acknowledging his new role, Paranjpay pledged to continue building on Bailey's foundation. He highlighted growth opportunities, especially in the underdeveloped food category and the water sector. In 2008, HUL scaled up its Purit Water Purifier venture, addressing the critical need for safe drinking water in the country. The innovative product, operating without electricity or gas, quickly gained traction, reaching millions of households and earning accolades. Purit's success story unfolded further as it expanded globally, reaching countries like Bangladesh, Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico, Nigeria, and Sri Lanka. By 2013, it had positively impacted the lives of 45 million people worldwide. HUL, aligning with Unilever's sustainability goals, also undertook initiatives like the Help a Child Reach 5 Inches campaign, emphasizing hygiene education and handwashing. Looking ahead, Paranjpay articulated a vision focused on sustainability, aiming to decouple business growth from resource use while coupling it with societal progress. In the realm of home and personal care, he outlined plans to introduce winning brands from Unilever's global portfolio, emphasizing categories like top-end hair care, skin care, and deodorants. Navigating Challenges The FMCG sector in India faced a roller coaster ride with fluctuating raw material prices in 2008. In response, HUL adjusted prices in 2009, but its performance faced challenges, as highlighted by CEO Pullman in Unilever's 2009 financial results. Wheel, a significant contributor to HUL's top line, faced stiff competition, particularly from gaudy detergent. However, strategic maneuvers and relaunches helped Wheel reclaim its position as India's largest laundry brand. In the subsequent years, HUL ventured into new product launches and category expansions across various segments. It introduced Comfort Fabric Conditioners, SIF Multi-Purpose Cleaner, and expanded the Dove brand into deodorants, hair oil, and body lotion. In the personal care category, new products and relaunches were observed in brands such as Fair & Lovely, Close Up, and Rexona. In the food business, HUL entered the economy segment of the tea market with Brooke von Sahatmand and capitalized on the growing teabag market with Taj Mahal and Lipton brands.
Additionally, it launched various flavors and communicated the benefits of tea through the Red Label Health Challenge campaign. In the coffee market, variants of brew were introduced, and a unique partnership with Future Group aimed to develop and brand bakery items exclusively for big bazaar stores. Building Momentum Amidst these strategic moves, Gitu Verma took the reins as the executive director of the foods business in 2011, bringing with her a wealth of experience from PepsiCo and Procter & Gamble. In 2013, HUL and Unilever redefined their agreement, revising matters related to technology, trademark licenses, and services provided by Unilever to HUL. The royalty paid by HUL to Unilever increased from 1.4% to 3.15%. This adjustment reflected the evolving interdependence within Unilever's global operations, in the same year, Unilever expressed its intention to increase its stake in HUL from 52.48% to 75% through an open offer in the stock market. Despite some adjustments, Unilever ended up owning 67.28% of HUL's shares. The move was part of Unilever's strategy to invest in emerging markets, recognizing HUL as an excellent Indian business with significant growth potential. The Indian Outsider a new chapter unfolds. In the ever-evolving story of Hindustan Unilever Limited, the transition from Nitin Paranjpay to Sanjeev Mehta as CEO marked a significant chapter. Mehta, hailing from Unilever's North Africa and Middle East regions, brought a fresh perspective to the table. Harish Manwani, HUL's non-executive chairman, expressed confidence in the leadership change, emphasizing the depth of talent within the organization. Meta, a commerce graduate and chartered accountant, came with a wealth of experience across various markets. Having previously led Unilever's operations in Bangladesh, the Philippines, and the name region, he wasn't a stranger to steering the ship. His appointment as CEO signaled continuity in strategy but with a renewed outlook. Upon assuming the role, Meta initiated a pilot study in consumer clusters, revealing gaps in HUL's market understanding. He advocated for dissecting the market more thoroughly, challenging the belief that certain categories were saturated. Meta's vision of creating many small Indias within HUL's operations aimed at tapping into diverse regional opportunities. In 2014, he introduced the Winning in Many Indias WIMI, initiative, reshaping HUL's structure to align with the varied landscape of the country. The move from four branches to 14 consumer clusters aimed at intensifying the go-to-market focus, recognizing the growth potential in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. In the pursuit of efficiency and effectiveness, Meta simplified work processes and introduced the country category business teams CCBT. These teams, representing specific categories, embodied an entrepreneurial mindset to enhance decision-making agility. While HUL continued its commitment to the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan USLP, launching initiatives like Help a Child Reach 5 Inches and the Domex Toilet Academy, Meta's leadership brought a strategic shift. The focus on premiumization in personal and home care reflected the evolving market dynamics. The divestment from non-core businesses, like the joint venture with Kimberly Clark Corporation, showcased a commitment to streamlined growth. As HUL faced increasing competition from regional players, notably Patanjali, Meta emphasized the need for agility. The rise of local companies posed a challenge, prompting introspection on whether HUL should adapt more profoundly to the local landscape while aligning with Unilever's global agenda.